what makes High View unique is that High View includes the high discovery feature in it. And again, ensuring that the uh, the land card is selected, I will then do a refresh. And in this refresh, it found um, finds the device. Uh, what's also unique and uh, improved on high view versus the standalone high discovery is that is that this will also show the version of the software. So in this case, it's um, it's a high OS. It's um, this is our uh, newer chipset. It's the high OS 3S, meaning it's a layer three switch. And it also shows the firmware version, which is the 6.0.01. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick ping, and something tells me that. It's not going to find it. Uh, correct. It did not find it because, again, the IP address of my laptop is a 10.99 subnet, and this is a 99.9. .9. So what I'm going to have to do is double click on this, and we're going to change this to a 10.10.10.2, um, same subnet. Click on OK. And you'll notice that it's giving you an alert saying that the parameters have successfully been changed. Please save the changes on the device. So unlike the High Discovery standalone application, the feature within High View does not automatically save any IP address changes or name changes on the device. And what this means is that if I were to now power cycle the device, it is going to go back to its 192.168 address. But what I'm going to now do is I'm now going to I've right clicked on the device and I'm going to add or go into the GUI and add it to devices. And what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to start up a um, switch management browser. This has the Java runtime environment already embedded in it. I'm going to go in with the default admin password which is private, all lowercase, and that is going to give me read-write access to the device. And from within here you will see that uh, it shows the device there's a single connection. This is where I'm currently connected into. It will show the name that this device has been given. Uh, it will also show over here there's a little warning triangle. This warning triangle means that there is an unsaved change to that switch and in our case that is the IP address that I have changed. So to ensure that this IP address is now going to be saved or converted from volatile memory. I'm now going to save it to the non-volatile memory. I will now click on the save. And as I do this, it's now taking all the saving um, or all the configurations that I've done and it will save this to the non-volatile memory and you'll notice that the warning triangle is now gone. So at this point the configuration of the switch has been um, saved as well as the IP address and that concludes the basic setup of our switch.